yourself into a human I can depend on to bring me happy. At least I have some privacy in this hallway! Hi, computer! My name is Raj. Voice authorization verified. Ambassador assistant, Roger Corby Jr. Computer! Wait, wait, wait. The android, Roger Corby Jr. Thank you, computer, for defining who my father was. He seems just like a terrific person! Hey, Raj! Woo! <gasps> Yikes! Bass and Lily, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Yes, Raj, we had a meeting with the captain. Lily will be going on a long away mission very soon, and we were talking it out. Yes, it's very exciting, but it's not going to happen for another week or two. Got it! Bass! Wasn't there exciting news you wanted to share with everyone? Regarding Star Trek news? Oh yes, regarding the Star Trek news. We're going to be doing that in just a moment. Viewers, Give us just a moment, we're going to head into my quarters and we are going to open the view screen up, all communications channel to the galaxy. Raj, thanks for the reminder. In Star Trek news, actor Paul Wesley, formerly of the Vampire Diaries, will be joining the Paramount Plus show Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Wesley will be reprising the role of a younger James T. Kirk, who we all know eventually will be the captain of the USS Enterprise. Now, what's fascinating about this, Lily, is the story has added that Wesley will be in the second season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. We haven't even seen the first season of Strange New Worlds yet, right? Yeah. This premieres May the 5th on Paramount Plus, fans. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they must have extreme confidence that season one will do well to already start casting and shooting in Toronto for season two. Mm -hmm. James C. Kirk should be a lieutenant at this point in Strange New Worlds as his first deep space assignment. Look for that, Trekkies, as we're on top of the continuity of Star Trek for you here on a Captain's Log. Right on, Lily. Star Trek reaches out to so many generations of fans, it's hard not to take interest in them or the time periods like where Kirk was when we go back to this prequel series, Strange New Worlds. Agreed. We have a great interview for you today here on a Captain's Log this week none other than the ship's computer from Star Trek Discovery for the first three seasons. Julianne Ooh. Grossman is with us here today on A Captain's Log. Julianne, thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank really you for having it. me. It's lovely of you to have me. Julianne, to be the voice of a Star Trek show is an impressive thing. Now tell us about your start into voice acting and voiceovers, then on to your production company, if you can tell us a little bit about that here in Los Angeles, Hearing Voices, Inc. I began doing voiceover in uh, 1994, which is odd because uh, I'm only 21 now. <laughs> um, uh, I, I learned to speak in utero. Um, I, I started doing voices on hold and um, voicemail system prompts and phone banking and, you know, you have one dollar in your account. And um, fortunately, that's not your account, Brian. But um, but 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 that process back in the day of voicemail systems uh, was called concatenation. So you didn't have to record everything a million times. You would just record you have, and then you would say one, two, three, and that's how you would record it in your account and so that way you didn't you know you have to record hundred thousand so you right but so that's how i got my start doing corporate voiceover fast forward all these many years later i'm sort of perfectly situated to do ai voices um because of my background i've been cast quite a bit as siri or the voice of alexa or the voice of you know and so, um, uh, you know, doing, doing 
I, I know you're going to get on to discovery, but, you know, doing discovery when I auditioned for it, I was literally in my pajamas at home, you know, and I didn't know what I was auditioning for. And I just put on my AI hat and uh, for some reason they chose me. And so it's, uh, it's been quite an honor and quite an honor to be here on your show, Captain's Log. Thank you for having me. Julianne, you've been in episodes from the beginning season on Star Trek Discovery in 2017 all the way through 2021. Please tell us about how this role started for you becoming the Discovery ship's computer. I didn't know what I was auditioning for. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what I was auditioning for. I, it just was an AI voice and, um, you know, not to offend anybody because now I'm, you know, live long and prosper and I'm, I'm a, a very honored uh, member of the family um, of Star Trek, but I never used to watch Star Trek um, with all due respect. And um, and so I, I just had absolutely no frame of reference for what I was reading. It was an audition and I, and I read for it at my mic, which is over there and um, had absolutely no idea what it was until I got called to do one session. There was no big announcement. You've been cast as the voice of the... I, I walked in and I, and I discovered there that it was for Star Trek. I didn't realize that I was the voice of Discovery even in that session. I, I, I did the voice. I did, I, I, you know, I had the huge screen in front of me and, you know, this is pre-COVID, you know, miss those days. And, uh, you know, had my headphones on and the feature film size screen in front of me and a bunch of guys in the booth, you know, uh, showing me where to drop in the lines. And, and, and I saw, I mean, I could tell that it was Star Trek, um, but I didn't know, I didn't have a frame of reference for which Star Trek or what it was for or, you know, the words discovery or any of that. And it wasn't until I'd been doing this like two or three times that I said, am I the voice of Discovery? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and, and this is the story of my life, by the way, Brian. I, I, um, I always find myself tripping into these big deals in life without any, you know, just oops, and I, trip in and and it's just uh it, it's it just changed the trajectory of my whole career did you do heavy research of for filling the big shoes of major barrett roddenberry who was the ship's computer for years before this one of the most meaningful things to have come out of this you know not having been familiar with with the canon um was when I, I got to meet Rod Roddenberry and Trevor Roth uh, of Roddenberry Entertainment. And Rod said to me, I wanted to meet the woman who took over the mantle of my mom. I had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah. I said, what, what do you mean? And, and he said, my mother, Majel Barrett, uh, was the voice of, of Star Trek for the voice of the computer for you know, 50 years or whatever, however many years it was. And they were actually considering continuing to use her and editing her voice going back, right? Yeah. You know, and at the last minute, you know, they and CBS Paramount, you know, decided that they were going to go with the new voice. And it was in that moment when I met Rod that that realization hit me and, um, and it was just so hum humbling and uh, I was so incredibly grateful. And are you ready for this? Brian, are you sitting down? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. actually, Lily and I are standing. <laughs> okay. Well, sit down. Um, my birthday is February 23rd and Majel Barrett's birthday is February 23rd. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> so that's cool. Yes. I'm so glad that I knew none of this coming in because I would have been a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very special, very special uh, slot in, in Star Trek canon history. And I'm uh, just um, still overwhelmed to have been able to do that. 
A Captain's Log returns in a moment. Welcome back to A Captain's Log. We are interviewing Julianne Grossman. Check out these facts. Julianne, have you always known that you could do a monotone voice or switch it on and off? Or did someone have to tell you that? We'd like to hear the voice of the ship's computer for discovery, <laughs> right, Lily? AI came so naturally, comes so naturally to me. In fact, uh, I, I think I can, I think I'm allowed to break the news. At this point, I was, I was, um, you know, not allowed to say anything, but I, but I've seen advertising for it. So I'm in Star Trek Resurgence, the video game that's going to be out later this summer. Jonathan Frakes and I are the only original Star Trek cast members in the game. And Jonathan Frakes is such a lovely man, you know, having met him several times and talked to him several times at the conventions, he's a doll. He's such a kind man. And, uh, I was happy to know that that he and I were, you know, the only ones in, in the original Star Trek to be in the game. And and I when I auditioned for the game, because I had to, I had to audition for the game. Really? This was not handed to me. Not, you know, none of none of Hollywood is handed to anybody. <laughs> you gotta work for it. I auditioned with a different style of AI voice really? than I used for the discovery voice. So where in discovery, I say, black alert, black alert, or I say, um, the captain comes down from the, you know, it's a very, you know, AI, yeah, there's the, you know, there's, that's the cadence. Yes. Um, but in, in, for the game, again, didn't know what I was auditioning for. <laughs> It's just a video game and I'm just doing an AI voice, but I made the AI voice a lot more human. It was a lot more, there was more intonation and more expression to the voice. It was still automated, but it was a bit more humanized than the voice I had done for Discovery. And thank God I did that <laughs> because this resurgence, um, Star Trek Resurgence is in the canon and it takes really? place a hundred years after discovery. I do hope I don't get in trouble for saying all this. Oh, it's amazing. I, I appreciate I, it. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I'm only saying it because I've actually seen the ads for Star Trek Resurgence or I would not say any of this, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would have to taunt you with the secrecy of it. But uh, thank God I, I, I made that choice because mm -hmm. they may not have cast me had I done the exact same voice as Discovery. Because now, obviously, in season four and five, you know, this ship's been updated and mm -hmm. and and <laughs> I'm, I'm no longer, <laughs> you know, the voice. Um, so it's good to know that, you know that 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 the legacy carries on you know in resurgence so that that made me happy you're primarily doing your portion as the ship's computer in post-production are there any reads or interactions you have with the cast and what crew member or director producer would you work with primarily well he here's the unglamorous <laughs> <laughs> real live answer to that i had absolutely zero connection with any cast or crew member or director oh. what <laughs> really wow what happens is um they they call it additional dialogue recording adr and it's in an adr studio we did it on the on the lot at warner brothers this is pre-covid season three was entirely from my house. Well, knowing Discovery is filmed in Toronto, Canada, and you're in LA, I can see how you wouldn't have any interactions. To be really perfectly honest with you, I got no direction. Wow. Um, I, I got, you know, take one, take two, take three, let's go, reslate, let's go. Um, they, they, they just trusted me, and that's a, a rarity in this business, and they just let me do my thing. 
um, which which really says a lot about their confidence in their casting decisions and their, you know, and, and so they just, at least for me, they just let me go. And, um, um, but no, I, I came in in post when everything was in the can and I saw, um, you know, every scene that I was in, they would just roll, t roll tape um and i would have to fit my lines into i would drop my lines into that little space during which the computer voice is heard while all the other noise and action and sometimes ca other cast members speaking are going on you know okay now julianne which star trek discovery cast members uh, have you met then after production wrapped i know we were in the COVID season so you probably went to some of the conventions you alluded to a little bit earlier. Tell us a little bit about meeting the cast the first time and if you have a story to share on that. So I worked with none of them. I will end this by saying that I sent you a bunch of pictures. My favorite thing at the convention was when my, my convention agent, Scott Ray, would take me around. This was in 2019, pre-COVID would take me around to each of the cast members, Jason Isaacs and, you know, and on down, everybody, everybody. And he said, there's a, there's a member of the Star Trek cast that you haven't met. Oh. And they would look at him like he was crazy <laughs> and he would present me. And I would say, I need your ear because it's loud in there, you know? Yeah. And they would, they would go like this. And all I would say is black alert. <laughs> black alert and they okay the pictures that i have some of which i've sent you That's awesome. the pictures i have of the cast members literally falling to their knees i'm not <laughs> kidding D doug jones i sent you the picture of anson mount and doug jones just going ah! like they just couldn't believe it and and so that was the way i met most of the cast and and they just all embraced me i think i think it was um one of the other cast members who was just so delightful um said to me i didn't even know you were a real person oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so um so that was that was really fun it's it's uh it was pretty unique and it was uh you know oyen who um I, I sent a picture of us hugging, you know, she just threw her arms around me and just tilted her head back and just was, oh my, you know, just the reactions were uh, absolutely priceless, priceless, so much fun. A captain's log returns in a moment. Thank you for joining us here on A Captain's Log. We have a great interview this week. We're speaking with Julianne Grossman, Star Trek Discovery's computer voice. Now, Julianne, is there someone from the Star Trek universe that you haven't met yet, but you would like to maybe work with them or even just let them know how appreciative you are of them inspiring you and now that you're in the Star Trek universe? In terms of just regular old having fun, Mary Shivo is... Uh, so much fun. We did the match game together oh, yeah. um, <laughs> at, at uh, the convention in 21. And she was just so much fun. And she was ribbing me and I was ribbing her. And, and it turns out she lives close by to me. And I would say she was from Themyscira, but she's not. <laughs> she's a Klingon. <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Just a fabulous, strong woman. And yeah. I love it. And I've actually become very good friends with Jane Brooke. Really? Yes. We've become very good friends. Yep. She's come to my house and she's an impossibly lovely human being. I wish I could have met Leonard Nimoy. Oh, yeah. I really do. I would have loved to have had a sit down with him. Having met Nishal, uh, our beloved Uhuru, um, and having spent some really quality time with her at one of the conventions. Um, I was so honored to meet her. What a story she has. I'm, I'm sure your fans all know this, that she was the first black woman to kiss a white man on television, that 
that she left the show and that it was Martin Luther King that talked her back into. Yeah, yeah no, no, she she left the show because she felt that she wasn't a, a big enough part of the show um, because she was black. And uh, and it was Martin Luther King who insisted that she stay on the show so that little girls, little black girls growing up knew that they could maybe one day be on television and do great things like she was doing. And uh, and so she did, she came back on and it was then that she had the first, uh, you know, interracial kiss in television history. And uh, just, just to be able to meet her and I had known this story coming in and she was so warm and so lovely um, that I probably would say her uh, in answer to your question. And I got to meet her, so cool. um, but I, I'd love to meet Leonard Nimoy. I'd love to meet Sonequa. I've never met Sonequa. Really? Um, and um, yeah, that's my answer. Julianne, there's something that you're very passionate about and that you would like to share with our viewers. Uh, I know earlier you alluded to the um, the suicide prevention. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? I have struggled with with unipolar depression for since I was about 21. Um, uh, so many creative people suffer from from this and other mental illnesses. Um, I have no shame about it. It is like having diabetes. Um, it's a cloud that descends on me sometimes and, uh, and I truly feel impaired sometimes. Uh, it affects everything, my work, my relationships, and it's, um, it, it, it's my cross to bear. Other people have different crosses to bear. Uh, this is mine, and and I know that um, so many thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people commit suicide every year in the United States. Um, I know that 19 million Americans suffer from depression in this country, you know, in America, and um, so I'm affiliated with an organization called uh, the D.D. Hirsch Suicide Prevention Center. Uh, the website is dd hirsch d i d i h i r s c h dot org. Um, you can donate. Um, you can also, if you or someone you love is in crisis, uh, you may call eight hundred two seven three eight two five five eight hundred two seven three eighty two fifty five. That's in English or Spanish, twenty four seven. They know what to do you know, to bring you, bring you back from the brink. And I will say this, um, having been certified in assist, which is uh, applied suicide prevention training skills, uh, or, or something like that is the acronym. Um, if someone, you know, or you love, or you are suicidal, you here, here's the only thing you need to do. This is the only thing you need to do. Get them to a safe place for that day or that night. Just worry about today or tonight. That's it. Keep them safe. Keep them looked over. Keep them watched. Um, and tomorrow, you'll deal with what tomorrow brings. But if you keep that person safe for just one night or just one day, you can save a life. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing that information with us. I know that's a, a very difficult subject for some people to come out and admit, or in your case, very nice of you to share that information. And if uh, someone's out there hurting, they know where to go. We really appreciate that. And thank you so much for joining us here on A Captain's Law, Julie. And I know Lily and I really appreciate your time here sharing the half hour with us. You're a great interviewer. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us on A Captain's Log. Join us next week for Star Trek news and more. Hello, happy, my old friend. I'm glad you've manifested yourself into a human I can depend on to bring me happy. Ooh.